where am I not speaking my truth? You know, it, not of course in relationships and all that, but also in your marketing. What is it that you're not saying? And it's really a bummer you're not saying it because that could really be the whole problem. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by success. Sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. When driven by this desire, men develop keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability unknown to them at other times. So strong and impelling is the desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life and reputation to indulge in. When harnessed and redirected along other lines, this motivating force maintains all of its attributes of keenness of imagination, courage, etc., which may be used as powerful creative forces in literature, art, or in any other profession or calling, including, of course, the accumulation of riches. Napoleon Hill. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I am here with my most amazing guest, Lisa. Lisa, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. So give us a 5,000 foot view of who you are and what exciting projects you're working on, what you'd love to do. Well, I'm Lisa Cherney, and I have been navigating the conscious entrepreneur, mission-driven, et cetera, et cetera, world <laughs> for 23 years. My first business was ConsciousMarketing.com. Before the secret was out, it was still a secret, and nobody knew what conscious was. Um, but I knew there was something different that needed to be done in marketing for us to attract what we wanted to attract. So that's where I got started in 1999. I'm really old. <laughs> and a baby. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Full circle, full circle to today where I have a unique show called Get Effin' Real, or you, I'll let you say the first F-bomb, you know, since it's your show. Um, and we really focus on the struggle stories. So we call it confessions from successful soulful entrepreneurs, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that um, we don't always talk about that is really integral to who we are and what qualifies to do what we do. And so we just put it all out there, thus giving everybody else permission to struggle too and know it has a purpose. Awesome. So I always love giving my guests the opportunity to drop the first F bomb. So you're doing just fine. <laughs> but, but I was loving get fucking real because it's it's not about just getting real and going, hey, you gotta hunker down and get successful. It's you gotta get real and admit that shit's going on in your business and in your life. And sometimes it sucks. And sometimes it sucks royally. And it's not about thinking happy thoughts so that happy things happen to you. It's about doing that internal work and going, okay, why does this piss me off so much? Why am I so fucked up? Why am I so, like, what is really going on? And I know a lot of help, self-help people are like, oh, you're not broken. You're not this. You're not, but shit's not going the way you want it to. So you got to stop and figure out what the hell's going on. And maybe it's just me. And maybe it's just because I recently adopted a psycho <laughs> dog from the SBCA. He's adorable and awesome now, but when we got him, he was, you know, feral. He had been on his own. And it's like, I can see the good in you. I know you're a good dog, but right now there's, you know, trying to bite my face off. Shit's not working for me. So we, we got to <laughs> hunger down and get some work done. And I think people do the same thing in business when they start, they're like, Hey, I got this awesome idea and I'm just going to flip off and <laughs> go and do shit. And it's like, um, okay, let's hone it in. So how do you help? How did, let's get into, how did you get into all of this and get fucking real? Cause that is hilarious marketing and I love it. Well, you know, honestly, I had been coaching six and seven figure entrepreneurs. I focused really on marketing, obviously with starting consciousmarketing.com and then into sales and leveraging group programs, you know, all of the buzzwords fill in the blank. And what I really always wound up supporting them with was why they weren't doing all the stuff that they had invested in or knew was the, you know, what they were supposed to be doing. Why, why weren't they doing or why wasn't? things happening in the way they wanted to happen. And so it really was largely an inner game, energetic, spiritual, you know, per, you know, personal development journey that needed to be prioritized because if that shit wasn't being addressed, 
then they really, they could have been hold the golden binder of like, do this thing and you will be rich. And they wouldn't have been able to do it. So I found that I, not only did I enjoy that part, but I found that it was an underserved part. So, you know, uh, fast forward through letting go a seven figure business, which we could talk about more later, if you'd like to, you know, me realizing, you know, I, I wasn't happy. I was building something that ultimately, you know, really wasn't for me. And I need to really help other prevent other people from doing that and like get real and not just get real, get fucking real about what's in your way, what isn't working, you know, what do you need to address? What do you need to speak your truth about so that we can we can help you get on with your mission? Like the world needs you and you're, you know, messing around with whatever you're messing around with that's delaying it. And so that's where like, like the F word had to be in there because it just was like, it's really a a call to action in and of itself. It absolutely is. And I would think that it draws a certain kind of person (laughs) that's been, you know, using the excuse, oh, I'll make those calls. Just, I just have to clean the baseboards with the toothbrush because they're not quite clean enough right now. And as (laughs) soon as my office is clean enough, then people will respect me and then we could go on to do work. It's like, and then they go, Hey, whatever is going on, whatever I'm doing, it ain't working anymore. Like we got to stop some uh, love it, love it, love it. So who do you love to work with? Who's your ideal client right now? Well, it's funny that you even bring up the question of ideal client. Cause way back in 1999 with consciousmarking.com, that was ideal client was like, I, I feel like I was one of the first people to say ideal client versus your niche or your target you know, and then people started saying perfect customer. And now I actually say ideal aligned client, because I feel like we need to get even more specific. And, you know, my ideal aligned client is somebody who is seasoned. You know, I I like saying evolving expert, you know, someone who knows I'm an expert. I really help people. Like I know my shit, but I'm also like (laughs) constantly in process. I know I'm evolving and people that are seasoned, have struggled, are frustrated, and also the ones not ready to give up. Like the ones that are like, you know, I have come too far. I have too much expertise. Like I know I'm supposed to serve the planet or the world or the animals or whatever it is in a certain way. And I'm not doing it um, in in as big as way as I want to. And I want to freaking figure it out. And all that other shit that I invested in, in all the systems and the blueprints and the formula, didn't do it. So what, you know, what, what is it? So that's where I, that's where I enter the scene and really look at things from a completely different perspective than any other coach. Nice. I love it. So when you start working with somebody, what does that look like? What kind of journey do you take them on? Well, it's their journey. And that's one of the things that makes what I do different. Um, because they're used to working with, you know, investing in a coach or mentor and the mentor says, okay, this is the, this is my way. This is what made me successful. So do it this way and you'll be successful too. And so let's start here and go through, you know, from A through Z. And um, I call myself an unmentor and as an unmentor, we are removing what is not working and we are helping the person really get back to like trusting themselves, following their intuition, doing what feels good like really realizing, oh, I can't make all decisions based on money, wanting money. That's what I did in the past. That's not working. I need to really focus on enjoyment. How am I going to make this whole business thing something that I really enjoy, but also help people? So so that's where we start. Like what's not feeling good in your business? What do you need to say no to? What do you need to stop doing? And some of that is the hardest things some entrepreneurs will ever have to do. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you find that people do to hide from themselves? Oh, let's see. They uh, keep a client that is toxic, at, at worst toxic, at least annoying. Like they just keep clients that are not aligned. So it just sucks the life out of them. Right. And it's just you know, it, it's, you know, we think about, we have a certain amount of energy bandwidth for doing this entrepreneur thing. And we, we just don't have a lot of margin of error to, to have people in our orbit that are really not working. That goes for team that they're tolerating somebody not totally um, working in the way that they want to work or bringing the right skill sets to the table. Sometimes we're as evolving experts, we evolve so uh, quickly and consistently that the people around us need to evolve. And if they don't, 
then they need to leave and, you know, bring others in. So, you know, holding on to clients and team that are not in alignment. Um, and then the third most uh, common thing I see is that they're not speaking their truth in their marketing or to their clients. Like they're holding back or they're hiding parts of themselves. And, and I'm not here saying you need to tell everybody everything. I'm saying that if it's related <laughs> to the way that you help people and the transformation you are trying to hold for other people, you know, it's really uh, powerful and important and makes you stand out as a byproduct you know, in your marketing if you are really saying the things. But there's a lot that keeps people from saying the things. So we look at a lot of that. So I would say those are the three biggest things. Yeah, and looking at those things, you have a neat way of, kind of bringing that out so that people can see it. Talk to me about your commandments. Yes, I was going to say, I have the GFR commandments. <laughs> you do. <laughs> They're awesome. It was hilarious. So I, peeps, you got to know this. So we were having a little chat earlier and I got the commandments and I'm like, wow, this is almost like being, you have to understand, I'm also a good Catholic school girl from way back when. So <laughs> it's, like, it's like going to confession. That's awesome. I used to make shit up when I went to confession. <laughs> I, I well, got to get funny because fucking real now. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jewish. So I think it's funny that I have something called the commandments and each commandment has a confession question. Cause I don't know, you know, I don't know only from TV, what confession is actually like, um, but it, it really works. You know, that's, this is what they, they look like. And um, of course we'll let you know how you can get, you know, your copy so you can see them all, but you know, how they were born, Michelle, was um, several years ago, I was really in this place of like, okay, I let go of that seven figure business. That wasn't me. It took me a few years to kind of like work my way out of what I was doing and really sitting with what is it like, what is next for me? What is the next version of my work look like? And when you've been doing this for as long as I have you and you're evolving expert, you do need to like make sure that your work really is aligned and you have passion about it. So I was really thinking about how have I helped people? What are the things that I say over and over again? What are the, you know, what are the most common like challenges that I see? And it turned out to be there were 12, you know, things, things that I would say all the time, like make yourself your most important client. Like when people would really need to do their own work on themselves, like, I don't need to be telling you what to do. You need to go do your own work on this thing, you know, so make yourself your most important client as example. One of the things I used to say all the time. So I realized there were 12 of these things. and I didn't know what they were at the time. You know, it wasn't about creating a lead magnet, even though that's what it, you know, is now. It's a great way. It's a great tool for people to, you know, give me their email for, and we can be in community about and being transparent about that. But the thing that I'm also being transparent about is that's not how they were born. It really was this like true desire to kind of find a summary way of the key things that I think get in the way of a mission um, based entrepreneur over, you know, a, a time, the lifetime of their business. And so they became the GFR commandments when I realized that it wasn't about helping people get real. It was about helping them get effing real. Um, and and I'm a trainer at heart. So I'm always like a teacher, right? I'm always okay, how can I help people get this? So I had the commandments, but that wasn't enough. There needed to be a question that went with each of the commandments that really helped someone say, is this one for me? Is this the thing that's in my way right now? So this is not a 12 step program. This is a, you know, look through you the- have not, You have not entered like the, <laughs> I, I want to say it was like FF or something. <laughs> yeah, <somehow>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. This isn't, this isn't like, you know, yeah. F-A. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'll have to think about making that funnier. Anyway, so it's about looking at the confession questions, kind of like skimming them and be like, oh, that one's like hitting me right between the eyes. Like this is the one for me. So for example, like number five, I already mentioned, make yourself your most important client. The confession question for that one is if I was my own client, what would I tell myself? And then what else would I tell myself? Right. And so that's a real fun one to use. Like if you find yourself having trouble making a decision or you feel stuck, you feel confused, you know, then these are, this is where the commandments come in. So I, I mean, I use them every day and, and all, nearly everyone that has ever seen them and I talk to them, they'll be like, oh my God, they're like right here. Oh my God. They're like right here in my bulletin board. They're just, they know they just keep them close in hand because they're so helpful. I call it the roadmap for getting real. Nice. I love it. Well, and I think as being a member of Fuckers Anonymous, um, <laughs> commandment number three, don't worry funny. about being normal, proper, polite, suits me just fine. 
That is one of my faves. Preach in the choir. <laughs> yeah. And that confession question is, where am I not speaking my truth? I mean, that's a really potent question right. to ask ourselves. Where am I not speaking my truth? You know, it, not of course in relationships and all that, but also in your marketing. What is it that you're not saying? And it's really a bummer you're not saying it because that could really be the whole problem. Not that you don't have the big enough list and not that you're not consistently posting on your social medias and not that you're whatever, fill in the blank with what people tell you you should be doing. It could just be you are not speaking your truth in your marketing and therefore you are not attracting the people you need to help because they don't know you're there. They don't hear what it is you're, that you're screaming you know, from your heart or in your head. I love that. I think so many people feel shut down when they go to the gurus and the gurus say you have to be outgoing and an extroverted or you have to be quiet and, sh and shy and meek and or you have to be this and you have to be that. And it's like, quit it, stop. Just figure out who you are and go out there and do the thing because I think all of your commandments when they when they really hear and understand why it's so important to to find out who you are because a lot of people have been so shut down they don't even know who they are they know that they're shut down and potentially they can figure out those struggles so and number four trust that your struggle serves your mission it absolutely does and when you can figure out what that struggle is then you've realized, Hey, it's okay to be loud. Hey, it's okay to swear. Hey, it's okay to do whatever, because there's other people out there that don't feel okay to be loud and to swear or to be quiet and to write for a living. Like it, I have experienced so much that it boggles my mind that the kid that wants to read is being berated for not going outside and being a jock and the jocks are being berated for not staying inside and studying and getting better marks. Like it's ridiculous how everybody feels suppressed in some way. And when you can get that out, you start to liberate other people. You, you got me jazz girl. I I'm totally <laughs> agree. <laughs> preach girl, preach. <laughs> awesome. So once give me an example of a Cinderella story, one of your clients, either like the best improved or one of the most fun ones for you. What's one of your Cinderella stories? Oh, one of my favorite Cinderella stories is a couple that I worked with that are in business together. Um, and they, uh, raised their two boys in Flagstaff, Arizona, and were, uh, really struggling in this consulting business. And the boys left, found their way to leaving home, graduating, you know, college and stuff. And they were really feeling restless. And this translated very much into their business, right? We are not completely compartmentalized beings, right? I call it a holistic, you know, look at our business where we are struggling in our personal lives very well, not only spills over into, but is somewhat related to. So I said, you know what? Give in to this restlessness. Like, let's stop trying to like avoid it. Let's just like, just marinate in it. Go be in the restlessness. And what came out of it was that they wanted to sell their home. This is not an immediate, maybe took a month or two of really marinating in it to sell their home of 30 years in Flagstaff and move to Belize. And it, I was like, yes, <laughs> this is like the most amazing success story. And they did just that. They've been in Belize now a year and a half. And it's like, like, their li like lifetime dream was to live near the ocean. Um, she is uh, loves to swim, like long distance swimming in the ocean, you know, and he surfs and all this kind of stuff. And so, and, and of course, um, after they did this, there was so much like struggle and discontent and restlessness that was released that they got way more excited about their business and even started to launch some new products and also um, really lean into partnerships that they had had. Like, this is one of the things I think that I, like I do best and I have so much fun with is people come to me thinking like, I have a small list. I don't have anything, you know, like what, you know, what am I going to do? Whatever. And we, we talk a little bit and we soon realize that there's some like low hanging fruit, some like gold nugget that they're kind of ignoring because it doesn't quite fit the narrative or something. And I'm like, well, go for that. So they had this business partner that they just needed to just stop 
messing around with all this, oh, I need the easing and I know I'll do all this online marketing stuff, just cultivate these great partnerships. And now they have three or four of these great partnerships and they're home-based in Belize and they're flying all over the world doing, you know, workshops and consulting gigs. And I just love bragging about them because, you know, it, it's not a money story, right? It's not, oh, they made, you know, $10 million in 10 weeks, you know, you know, it's like, yeah, they're having a lot of great financial success, but gosh, that, that really pales in comparison with like living your dream, you know, in Belize with your love, you know? <laughs> right. That is awesome. As they say in Belize, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. The, I'll take your um, word on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the one thing that strikes me about that is so many times I see entrepreneurs having this conversation of, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I have to do this. And it's like, well, what else do you got in the go? And then they get super excited about this other thing over here. And it's like, yeah, but that won't work. And it's like, why not? <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? The amount of excitement yeah. you have on this thing over here is going to take on a life of its own, regardless. <laughs> and this yeah. thing that you have to need to should, you know, one day is like, no matter how good of an idea that is, it's not yours. And they, I think that the industry uses bright, shiny object syndrome as a way to shame people, uh, creative people, people that have multiple missions and things they want to do. And so they kind of use that as like, don't change what you're doing. Pick the thing that I'm the one who told you that this was a great idea. And this is where you're going to make your money because parents don't have money. These people have money, you know, and, and, and it's, bright, shiny object syndrome is really just them kind of like reaching for something they're more passionate about because that thing isn't it. Right. I used to have a, a, whole, a marketing program called uh, ditch your niche and you will get rich. Nice. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, and I think too, it, it lends to the whole ADD entrepreneur thing, which to me is fantastic, wonderful, and a superpower unto itself when you can learn to hone in on it. But I think a lot of people, because they're being told what to do, they look a lot like, you know, I don't know if it's Harry Potter or before that, this or Sir Mickey Mouse when he's in the room and he's flicking the wand around. <laughs> this random <laughs> shit's happening. It's like, well, it's because they're telling you not to. So you're trying to hone your skills back instead of learning how to harness them and run like a racehorse or, you know, whatever that you are. Yeah. Or stop, or which stop. is GFR commandment number eight. Yeah. Sometimes stopping is the most lucrative action to take. Talk to me about that. Cause I think people have the hardest time understanding that. Oh, yes. Including me on some days. Yes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so the, the confession question for this one is where do I need to pause or stop, but haven't because of fear. Oh, such a good one. Right. Um, such a great, here's a great example of this. Um, I recently wrote in some marketing copy about a new talk I'm doing. I wrote, um, sometimes success comes from turning down great opportunities. And I had a client who was cultivating this corporate partnership four years with Intuit. She is like certified QuickBooks, did it like, you know, master, you know, all the, and she said for years, she was sort of lamenting, like, why? why isn't Intuit like coming to me to partner with? And I could really, you know, do so much for them. And this went on for many years. So last week, Intuit reached out to her and said, we want you to teach a webinar. And she came onto our Unmentor pod call. This is what I, we gather twice a month for each of our pods. And, she, and she's like, Intuit finally reached out to me. And I do not, it, I don't want to do this. This is, it's going to be like 10 hours of work. And they want to pay me like 150 an hour. And like, they don't like all any of my topics. And she's like, it just doesn't sound fun. And we were like, okay, don't do it. She was like, really, really? I don't have to do it. I'm like, no, you don't have to do it. You just still get to brag that they asked you, right? That's like still, you still accomplished that they asked you. Doesn't mean you need to do it. She was so relieved. So it's a perfect example of stopping. Like she's like, I just don't want to spend the time on that. So be like full stop. Thank you for the invitation, but no, I'm not doing that. And it is like the people that I work with are in a season in their business where they are getting multiple opportunities and, and really figuring out and even figuring out sounds too much in your head, but really feeling into which ones are the ones that you want to do and which ones are not is 
a skill that needs to be developed. And sometimes it's just stopping. Like I'm doing this interview, but I have not done interviews in a couple months because I had some family stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm just not adding anything. And actually ours was a, a reschedule, right? I'm not adding anything to my plate right now that isn't sort of essential. So that's like a little, when I teach number eight, I say there's little stops, like little pauses, like in your day. I think it's called macro mini and macro mini stop. I can't even remember what it is. Like a mini stop is like in the middle of your day macro. And then there's like, I'm not doing this program anymore. Like I'm stopping this program, even if it's successful. And that's some of the hardest stuff to do as an entrepreneur. Right. And especially when you think, you know, everybody's been counting on me to do this thing. How do I possibly not do this thing? Yes. And I, you see it all that I see it more often in um, singers hmm. because they're going out and they've sold tickets for 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people. And it's like, I really don't want to do this anymore. And how do you say that to that kind of crowd? But you have to, because the inevitable then shows up when, you know, they get laryngitis or they can't sing or they break a leg or something. And I always said, you either consciously go to club med or your body will take you to club medicine. Ooh, you I either like consciously choose the pleasure that you want to have and go there and do the things that liberate you or your body will just take you out of the game and say, now we're not doing this shit anymore. Yes, I agree. It shows up in our body um, for sure. You know, one of the skills I was working on last year was I'm going to take time off before I get sick. Like such a simple concept, but no, we, our culture is like, you get sick. Okay, you're sick. No worries. Time off. But you think you're going to get sick or you feel like you need to slow down so you don't get sick. Oh, no, no, that's not good enough. <laughs> I want to hear it. I want to feel it. Cough on the phone for me. <laughs> can't make it in today. <laughs> oh, then it's acceptable. <laughs> so, so Lisa, I got to ask you, so people listening to this, what kind of struggles are they going through right now? And they're thinking, oh my God, Lisa, I need you so badly. Hmm. They don't want to give up on their dream of helping people, a community companies in a certain way. They don't want to give up on it, but gosh, they are struggling and they're like, I made it, like I've gotten help. I've invested in help. So I've done that, you know, like what else do I need to do? Um, and I, I really want to say, listen to my podcast so that you can hear other struggles and it could inspire you to know, like, there is another, like you will get through it and it probably will be pretty damn great. Um, they also want to like break free or just feel sort of bit disillusioned with, mm -hmm like marketing, for example, like, and they're really not into social media and they feel like they have to do social media. So, you know, and so they're, so people are either doing marketing things that they don't want to do, or they're just not doing marketing because they don't know, like, they don't know what really resonates with them. And they sort of feel guilty about not doing the things, you know? So <laughs> I do this thing called the marketing reset retreat. And a lot of what they say is, thank gosh, I, there was all this stuff that I wasn't doing, but now I don't feel guilty about it anymore. Like you've given me permission to really focus on, like just pick something that I really, you know, that I really love. So I think those are the things, you know, they're just, they don't want to give up on their business. They feel disillusioned um, and they're not quite sure what to do. And so when people come to me, I say, you're, you're investing in an unmentor. Like you were investing in someone who was like in your corner, holding your hand, the way that I work with people, we're connected on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, you are going to grow and heal through this experience. And that's going to serve your business. And then there's going to be something else you're going to grow and heal through, and that's going to serve your business. And it is sort of, you know, this loop that happens that, uh, when you start to really acknowledge it, prioritize it, this is where I started in our conversation. It's amazing the magic that happens, right? You move to Belize and your business grows. Like, how does that even work? But that's how it works. It works beautifully. So peeps, if the whole get shit done thing has only got you so far, it's time to get fucking real. <laughs> time to connect with Lisa. So I know they're going to want to start their journey with you. How do they do that? Give me your podcast, your everything. What do you got? Yeah. Well, first get your commandments because they're really awesome. And it's not a 12 step program. Like I said, you'll just pick one that works for you and you'll get some little instructions when you go check those out. So that's Lisa, uh, that's not Lisa. That is gfr.life forward slash 12 C. And I'm sure Michelle will put the link somewhere uh, near this video and audio. Um, so get your commandments. 
And then check out the podcast, the GFR show, uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts and scroll through. And they're all the titles are kind of like from something to something. So you'll find a struggle that resonates with you. And even if you have never been through that, you will find that it's going to give you some hope and have you think about what you're currently experiencing a little bit differently. And then of course, if you're like, Lisa Journey, you know, I want to hang out with you. We have the GFR squad, which is a really easy way to hang out with me. It's 20 bucks a month. Um, and we go through the commandments one a month and we talk about it. We get real about it. And it's a really, really amazing group of people. So I would check out the GFR squad. We'll put a link for that as well. Nice. I love that. That'd be awesome. And peeps, you'll undoubtedly see me in there because that sounds fantastic. So yay. Yay. So I have to ask you, at what point in life did you know you're a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? 28. <laughs> and what 20 happened? freaking eight. I was laid off three times in a two year period of time from corporate America. And on the third one, I started interviewing for jobs like director of marketing jobs and I'm a great interviewer and they wanted to give me the jobs, but I didn't want them. And I'm like, okay, if I don't want the job, that's like the next Holy grail, something, something's going on here. And so I left corporate. I started my own thing first as a contractor, you know, long-term contract assignments. It was kind of a nice, you know, cushy way to start. Um, and then, you know, consciousmarketing.com was born and, you know, I was sort of off the races. I, I live in Southern California. It's a really hotbed of, you know, conscious, you know, cool entrepreneurs. And so uh, it was a great place to get started. And I think the only thing I've done really well is to uh, be real with myself, <laughs> GFR, um, the whole way through. And so I never succumbed to getting a job <laughs> again. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Lisa, you've been absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for your time. I know how valuable it is. Any last words for our peeps? Last words for the peeps. Ask yourself where you're not speaking your truth and do whatever it takes to figure out why that is. Heal that, feel supported and start using that in your marketing. Nice. Do whatever the fuck it takes. Do whatever the fuck it takes. It's, it's a non-negotiable thing to make you successful. So stop avoiding it. Look at it now. Love it. Thank you again, Lisa, for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. This is amazing. Awesome. Beeps, this is Michelle Nedelec, your mistress in business. Thank you for being here today. Be sure to subscribe to the show. Give us a rating. I like fives. Just like I like diamonds. You can send me those too. That'd be okay. And we want to help you get it up and keep it up. So make sure you show up next week for our next episode. Thank you for listening to the Little Blue Pill for Business podcast with your mistress in business, Michelle Nedelec. Why are you still here? Go to littlebluepillforbusiness.com and get your goodies. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share it with somebody else that you know would enjoy getting it up in business after you subscribe to the podcast, of course, so you won't miss any future episodes. Now, check the notes for links. Oh, and only tell your wife if she's into this, you know, entrepreneurship. And I'll see you both on the other side.